from CES 2019 here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Michael Artsis. You are the Terrifics. You're amazing. Thank you so much for watching this. This is great. I've got John here and Electrofly is the company. You guys are bringing George Jetson to life. Okay, it doesn't fold up in a briefcase, but this is the personal aircraft, but also really the unmanned aircraft. It's a drone you can fly, kind of like riding a motorcycle, but also it's uh, a drone that is unmanned as well. Uh, talk about the different things that the products you're making do. Sure, so as you said, it's a personal flying machine. But uh, you know, a lot of the times what we're seeing is that 90% of the, the drones out there, they, they carry a camera and they carry a couple of sensors. And we're trying to get away from that. We're trying to get into more meaningful payloads like, like a passenger here or a, uh, an operator or a package. And so what we've done is we've uh, put some innovations on here that allow us to, to increase the onboard energy density and also decrease the amount of energy required. So some of the ways we've done that, we've got patent pending uh, technologies that allow us to be more efficient. So if we uh, put some of the lifting burden on the wings, that allows us to not hang on the propellers. And that's very energy intensive to hang on the propellers, whereas wings are highly efficient. Uh, and then on top of that, we also replace some of our battery requirement with thrust, so uh, with thrust off of a gas motor. And gas is, is way more energy dense than batteries. And so really, uh, you know, with the wings carrying more weight and, uh, and, and using the gas to uh, offset the battery requirement, we're able to enter into a whole new world where carrying bigger loads is really practical. So what is the point, is this, is this to get me from point A to point B, I'm gonna get on one and fly, is it for fun and recreation, is it for both, is it to send packages from one place to another? So the idea behind Electrofly is basically a two-fold mission. We're trying to uh, increase multi-rotor payload capacity so you can carry more, and we're, we're trying to increase our range so that you can fly longer. And uh, in terms of use, you know, early on, I think you're going to see that it's it's used by early adopters. It's almost like this extreme recreational vehicle. But you know, there's a lot of like search and rescue type operations that could be done where you're not going to endanger anybody else, no other aircraft, no other pilots or or people on the ground. And uh, you know, military application, for example, you know, if you've got a really dangerous situation, you could fly this machine in remotely piloted and then bring somebody out uh, so that you never expose anybody else to danger. So, and, and then as you mentioned, package delivery is, is like a whole new world that I think we'll see. I, I, I like that idea of bringing, some, bringing this to somebody, they get on who's distressed and then it flies them somewhere. Um, and, and I imagine eventually for that, you'll make it a little bit more uh, friendly for riding it because this is much more of a motorcycle design, which is great, but if you're injured, uh, you're not gonna, you know, ride a motorcycle. Um, talk about uh, the 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 double propeller, uh, double rotor setup, and um, you know how what the fail safes are. Okay. Well, uh, back to your point quickly about riding a motorcycle while you're injured. The difference between riding a motorcycle is that requires skill and strength, and uh, this is something that is computer stabilized, and so. You really, you could put a sack of potatoes on this plane and it's going to be just fine. You're calling it a plane. Uh, well, it's, it, this aircraft is a better word. For What's it. interesting is you don't need, in these cases, you don't need the infrastructure of an airport. You could take this That's off right. and land it from anywhere. It's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, talk about the, the double propeller, double rotor sure. configuration and the safety feature. Sure. So by having uh, eight rotors on there, we have additional redundancy. So no single failure will cause you to, to crash or anything like that. And what's the cost of something like this? You know, we haven't we haven't produced them. We haven't gotten any orders yet. Uh, we're a brand new company. Four months old. Four months old is about how long uh, people have seen this publicly. And so uh, we don't have a solid price point, but I think that you'll find out initially these are coming in probably about the $400,000 mark. And if you think about, you know, any Great for other. local police departments, search and rescue, EMS, stuff like that. Right, and, and you know, just just the price point of having a jet-powered aircraft, there, there's nothing under a million dollars, and so really, 
uh, to have like a custom built uh, personal flying motorcycle if you want to think of it that way. It's really, uh, you know, it, it's in this early stage, it's really quite appropriate. Could someone buy this and fly this? What do you need to do with the FAA? What clearances do you need? What training do you need? That's the great thing about the FAA is they've already been exposed to manned aircraft. What, what they're catching up to is unmanned aircraft. And so like in terms of you know, experimental aircraft or ultralight aircraft. The FAA has provisions for those things. And so uh, I think that, that that challenge is largely largely solved. Remotely operating these things uh, is, is actually more of a challenge from a regulatory standpoint. But there's there's enough of a, of a public push that I think that you're going to see that that's going to come along really quickly uh, in the FAA, with the FAA as Have well. Have you flown one? Have you gotten it airborne? So we've gotten the aircraft uh, airborne by itself without a person. And then we kind of pivoted and we, we had to uh, kind of release this to the public. But uh, uh, we will be, so yes, we have gotten it off the ground. Uh, and But we're, we're turning our focus right now actually to uh, to to aggressive flight testing. So who does the test pilot on this? Like who volunteers for that crazy mission? Uh, I, I do. <laughs> but uh, you know, we've got some team members who are who are who are trying to say that I shouldn't do that. But uh, they're probably uh, right. <laughs> but uh, who, who could pass up history? I mean, it's it's uh, it's a great great opportunity. And you know, so we have this awesome opportunity to be testing right in our own state with uh, in Utah. Here, we we we've got uh, Deseret UAS. It's a testing ground that's opening up in Utah right near where we are. And so it gives us a really a, a good opportunity to uh, to test things that we've not seen. Well, that sounds awesome. Uh, how high can you go? What's the altitude? And uh, and then how, how far and how fast? OK, so how high? Uh, these are electric motors. They don't breathe like a, a gas motor does. And then the turbine engine, it's it, they're designed for high altitude. So the technology is there to go very, very high. But the reality is, is this this urban air mobility environment is going to be like a sub five thousand foot, um, uh, sub five thousand foot environment. In terms of speed, this one's going to be definitely less than like fifty miles an hour. It's designed more for like a rooftop to rooftop type application, and so uh, speed is not really an issue. But if we had customers who demanded more speed, they, we have a lot of provisions to increase that. What about range? Uh, we uh, we can I think we can safely say that we're going to beat an all electric system, but uh, we don't have exact figures on that. And we give me a ballpark. Can you get a, a one mile, fifteen yeah. miles, a hundred miles? You know, I think the technology is to the point where if we can get that twenty mile mark, I think we're doing doing something that's going to start opening up a whole new world of utility here. And so I think that's where our, where our eye is. 20 miles. That's pretty good. Um, and, and that, I mean, at 50 miles an hour, that's under, uh, it's about a uh, half an hour flight time. Right around there. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and do these fold in when you take off or they're always out, which might create some drag? Uh, that's, that's right. That's, that's a good observation. At this point, they're fixed. Uh, but uh, one of the things we pride ourselves on is that uh, we watch drag unlike uh, most drones out there. Uh, we, we've, we, we've done a lot of things to improve uh, improve the aerodynamics of it. How are you guys funded? Are you a public company or you raise private equity or investment banking or is it all on uh, your back right now? You know, we're uh, we're a startup. We're internally funded right now. We've had some great conversations that are looking promising, uh, and uh, we have some good owners. One of whom, you know, owns a, uh, a military grade uh, or military qualified uh, machine shop, and then we also have a patent attorney who's one of our owners. And so we've got some really great uh, bones underneath the company. But uh, at this point, we are self-funded, and like any startup, we're always looking for investment. How'd you get into the space? Uh, you know, I I'm a pilot by trade, and I I ever since I was a little kid, I just loved anything that flew, and uh, and what what an opportunity, you know, uh, to to fly on on something that no one's ever seen before. This is really exciting for me, and and uh, I think. I think it's passion that got me in this space. Somebody asked me before I came on camera, would I fly one of these? 
My immediate answer was, well, I have a five-year-old, so no. But if I didn't and I was a single guy, absolutely. It looks like a hell of a lot of fun. But you got to be careful. So my advice to you as the CEO of the company is be careful. Uh, but it's great to see what the technology will be, and it's really exciting. Uh, John, thanks so much for your Appreciate time. Electrofly, until next time, be terrific.